Imagine you're relaxing in your backyard on a bright, sunny Texas summer afternoon. You're drinking some ice-cold lemonade, listening to your favorite music, and getting a nice, pleasant tan when, suddenly, the ground beneath you starts trembling. At first, you don't notice or even recognize what it is. But soon, it's undeniable. Something nearby is creating quite a commotion, and the tremors are only growing. Whatever is doing this is big and powerful. Residents of McGregor, Texas, have moments like this all the time. Multiple times a week, their grounds will shake, their windows will rattle, and they will hear a soft rumbling in the distance. That's because McGregor is home to a rocket factory that is run by Elon Musk's SpaceX. This factory was established in this sleepy Texas town in 2003, and it has more than 500 employees working tirelessly on creating the rocket engines that will power SpaceX's mighty starship that will quite possibly be the vehicle that first takes humans to Mars. As you can imagine, the development of these rocket engines is paramount for the future of SpaceX and the future of all space travel, and you can bet that they are going to be testing them often. But what are these rocket engines capable of? And more specifically, what is the Raptor engine, and why is it a pivotal piece of the puzzle for Starship, SpaceX, and our travels to Mars? In July of 2021, Elon Musk announced that SpaceX was planning to build a second rocket engine factory in McGregor. This was welcome news for the quiet Texas town, located 15 miles west of Waco. The mayor of McGregor released a statement saying, it gives us a sense of pride to know that any engine used by SpaceX came through McGregor first. It makes us proud and, over the years, it has kind of put us on the map. We're just a little town of 5,000 people, and this has kind of given us a new identity. It certainly has given McGregor identity because the work being done at this factory and the one that will be built alongside it is major and revolutionary. That's because the factory is home to tests on the Raptor engine, a radical piece of space tech equipment that is capable of immense power. It's capable of enough power, in fact, that it will thrust the ship deep into the reaches of space, to Mars and possibly beyond. The new rocket facility that will be built in McGregor will work on the Raptor 2 rocket engine, a brand new iteration of this immense thrusting device. The plan is that it's going to produce 800 to 1,000 rocket engines a year, Musk said. That's a huge undertaking and underscores just how important these rockets are. So, what are they and how will they work? It'll come as no surprise to learn that any engine powering a ship to Mars needs a lot of power. It cannot be a weak, ineffective engine. In reality, it has to be a whole lot stronger than any rocket engine that's come before. If a trip to Mars needs a new type of spaceship, this ship needs to be a new type of rocket. That's exactly what the Raptor engine is. The Raptor is designed to power the Starship spacecraft and the Super Heavy rocket combined with it. It is known for its ridiculous amount of power and one truly game-changing aspect, its reusability. Like many other engines, the Raptor burns chemical fuel to produce thrust. However, its use of liquid oxygen and methane is different from nearly every other engine in the space travel field. No other rocket engine is capable of producing as much energy out of liquid methane and liquid oxygen. The use of methane is monumental and cannot be stressed enough. Most rocket engines in existence use kerosene instead of methane. But the idea of using methane makes a whole lot of sense when you look at the properties of it. You see, methane has a higher performance than most other fuels. This means it costs less and can allow the rockets to be even smaller. Yet the science behind a methane-powered engine is tricky. In fact, no methane-powered rocket has ever made it to orbit. In fact, it was only recently that a methane-powered rocket actually took flight for the first time. It just hasn't been done before. The Raptor uses what's known as a full-flow staged combustion engine. This refers to how a pump spoons a turbine in order to drive the engine. Typically in this process, some of the propellant used is expended. But the Raptor will utilize and use every single drop of propellant available. That makes it far more efficient than any other engine that's come before it. The Raptor is only the third engine in history to use this tricky technique, and the previous two tries, one for the US in the early 2000s and one from Russia back in the 60s, never got beyond testing. All this leads to an incredibly high pressure in the engine far surpassing what it is capable by most engines today. While the science behind that is enough to impress people, the fact that Musk is planning to reuse these rocket engines again and again and again is really turning heads. Musk has said that each engine will need to be capable of flying up to a thousand times. 
that's unheard of. In the past, most reused engines flew maybe a dozen or so times before being retired. Creating an engine that could be flown a thousand times? You can understand how much money and time and effort that would save SpaceX. The power behind the Raptor engine is setting records left and right. The current engine used by SpaceX named Merlin is attached to the Falcon 9 vehicles and the Falcon Heavy rockets. While those engines are a cut above anything else in the current space tech field, the Raptor blows them out of the water. The Raptor can produce 380,000 pounds of thrust at sea level versus the 1,900 pounds that Merlin can create. When the Starship takes to space, it will fly with six Raptor engines, along with 35 on the Super Heavy rocket. That is a total of 41 rocket engines per launch. SpaceX's current largest rocket, the Falcon Heavy, flies with 28 Merlin engines attached. Since the Raptor is far more powerful than the Merlin and the Starship will have more Raptors than the Falcon Heavy has Merlins, you can see how mighty this launch will be. All of that information gives you an understanding of why SpaceX is devoting entire factories to creating them. They have to move at an incredible rate if they want to keep production up. In fact, Musk himself has said that he wants the factory to be putting out one Raptor every 12 hours. This is a pace that is unprecedented in any industry, let alone the space travel industry. Right now, work is being done on developing Raptors and their successor, the Raptor 2, which will have more power. Details about the Raptor 2 are murky, but the jump from the Merlin to the first iteration of the Raptor shows that SpaceX isn't slowing down with its development and growth of its one-of-a-kind rocket engines. There's good reason for why they are working so tirelessly in that small Texas town. These engines are doing things that nothing else has. They're actually making good on the promise of methane-powered, reusable engines. Once again, SpaceX is changing the game. In the years ahead, SpaceX has set its eyes on Mars. Elon Musk has repeatedly said that he wants to be the pioneer who first successfully lands astronauts on the Red Planet. That will be a huge accomplishment for mankind truly unlike anything else in human history. But it won't be achieved by using regular rocket ships, and it definitely won't be achieved by using regular rocket engines. The Raptor engine and the Raptor 2 that is now being developed are a key piece of SpaceX's future. It has a radical amount of power, cultivated in ways that haven't been used before. With the science and reusability factor, the Raptor engine is what space engineers have always dreamed of, but have never been capable of achieving. It will save money, it will save energy, and it will help massive vessels like the Starship transcend our atmosphere and head straight for Mars. When you understand just how major and consequential the Raptor engine is, not only for SpaceX, but also for the future of all space travel, you can comprehend why Musk is pushing his company so hard to turn out these engines at such high speed. It won't be easy to make one engine every 12 hours, but the end result is going to be a fleet of Starship vehicles that can help traverse the universe and land humans on Mars, all at a fraction of the cost and energy that the engines of the past had. If we really do set foot on Mars in the next few decades, there's no doubt it's going to be because of the Raptor engine.